Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Anil Taylor. I'm a consultant gynaecologist and I practice in the UK. Uh, in this video, I want to uh, explain how we as clinicians would investigate somebody who is referred to us with uh, postmenopausal bleeding. Now, in our previous videos, I have described what menopause is and rough, uh, briefly, it is uh, um, uh, an event that occurs uh, usually the last period uh, following which uh, the woman then does not experience any further periods for uh, at least 12 months. Um, so it's a retrospective uh, diagnosis. Uh, the woman doesn't know that she is menopausal until 12 months have elapsed since the last period. And we, in the previous videos, have also talked about where bleeding can come from in these postmenopausal women. It can come from the uh, vaginal skin, or it can come from the cervix, or it can come from the uh, uh, womb cavity, usually the womb lining. And our main concerns are uh, whether the patient has got a cervical cancer or whether they have a womb cancer. So therefore, how do we go about investigating somebody with bleeding to find out whether they've got a cancer? So, of course, we would uh, take a history and uh, we would uh, uh, examine the patient. So feel their tummies, uh, see if we can feel any obvious lumps, um, but then uh, do a speculum examination, have a look uh, inside the vagina and uh, uh, focus on the vaginal skin, make sure that this uh, vaginal skin looks okay. Uh, does it look uh, atrophic, um, meaning has it uh, become weakened as a result of uh, lack of estrogens? Um, does the cervix look uh, regular? Does it look abnormal? Does it have any erosions? Does it have any polyps? Um, so that those are things that we can determine by doing a speculum examination. Um, so, uh, we would rely on, uh, what that examination does not tell us is what is going on inside the womb. Uh, and to find out what is going on inside the womb, what we would do is a transvaginal scan. Now, um, there are many gynecologists like myself um, who do their own vaginal scanning meaning when you attend uh, for your consultation, when you're being examined, as part of the examination, you have the transvaginal scan there and then, um, whilst you're on the couch. But there are some gynecologists who obviously don't do scanning and therefore uh, they will either refer you for a scan and then see you again, or um, uh, they will have arranged for you to have had a transvaginal scan just prior to the consultation. So you may have gone to the scan department, had the scan, and then come to the gynecology clinic for the consultation. So that can happen. So the scan itself usually only takes about five minutes or so. Um, it's not meant to be painful, of course. Um, uh, there's some women where it would be uncomfortable, uh, especially if there is weakening of the skin, uh, then it can, it can cause some discomfort. Now, a transvaginal scan does not require any preparation. If you were having a transabdominal scan, a tummy scan, then yes, uh, they would ask you to uh, drink lots of water to fill up your bladder. Uh, but with a transvaginal scan, we uh, don't need to fill up the bladder. If anything, we would prefer you to have an empty bladder. And um, certainly in my own practice, I would prefer to do a transvaginal scan rather than a transabdominal scan because uh, we are able to get much clearer pictures of the womb and the ovaries. And so when we do the scan, what are we actually looking for uh, on this transvaginal scan? Uh, and the answer to that is we are trying to uh, characterize the womb. And especially we are trying to look at the womb lining uh, more carefully and, and see uh, what its th thickness is, uh, whether it has been thickened or not, uh, whether it is regular or not, whether it has any 
uh, tiny, tiny cysts within the, the, the lining. So we are looking for these sort of uh, subtle uh, features um, on the scan. Uh, of course, many scans we will pick up uh, things like small fibroids and things. But fibroids are generally very common and we tend not to get too concerned with fibroids. It's the wound lining that we are most interested uh, in defining when we are carrying out an ultrasound scan. And it, it is uh, the scan that will then tell me whether I need to do uh, more investigations, which I will explain in the next few slides. So what uh, a scan will not be helpful um, for is if there is something wrong with the cervix. A transvaginal scan is not very good at looking at cervical abnormalities. So if, for instance, if you had a cervical cancer and somebody just did a transvaginal scan and, and, and that was it, and not, did an, and not do an examination to look at the cervix, then a cervical cancer could easily be missed uh, if one does not look inside with a speculum. So an ultrasound scan is not good at looking at the cervix. It is good at looking at the womb, the womb lining, and of course, uh, look at the ovaries, ovarian cysts, things like that, but not the cervix. So um, if the scan is abnormal, then we will decide there and then, whilst the patient is still on the couch, uh, whether to carry out a, a biopsy of the womb lining. So it is also sometimes called a pipel biopsy. It uh, involves us putting a very thin plastic straw uh, into the womb and um, uh, creating a, a slight vacuum inside that straw uh, using a syringe uh, or a plunger mechanism and uh, sucking out some cells from the womb lining. It, once once the, the straw manages to get into the womb cavity, it is not meant to be a, a long procedure. Literally should take 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, uh, and, and, and the straw will be removed. Um, and during that 10, 15 seconds, of course, it will be uncomfortable. Sometimes there is some... Uh, uh, a lot of discomfort, uh, but generally speaking, uh, most women are able to tolerate this procedure uh, uh, reasonably well. Occasionally, the, womb, uh, the, the, the straw fails to pass beyond the neck of the womb and gets stuck in the neck of the womb and doesn't enter the womb cavity. And, and then, obviously, we are not able to sample what's going on inside the womb itself. So, um, uh, is the, the biopsy accurate? Now, as a rule of thumb, if, for instance, if there was a cancer sitting inside the womb, and if we take a pipel biopsy, um, generally speaking, it is about roughly 70% accurate, meaning, meaning that uh, the biopsy, there is a 70% chance that the biopsy will detect that cancer, meaning there is a 30% chance that that biopsy will miss that cancer. So a biopsy is by no means a, a, a guarantee that uh, a, a cancer has been excluded. So doing a biopsy in clinic is not enough if the womb lining is thickened. Um, uh, so the, the, in my practice, what I tend to do is if the scan shows that the womb lining is thickened um, and uh, so various clinicians use different uh, criteria. So uh, I use five millimeters as a cutoff. Anything above five millimeters is considered as thickened. Anything less than five is considered normal. But there are some clinicians who would use four millimeters as a cut cutoff uh, for the thickness of the womb lining. So if it is thickened, then the next step that we will consider is something called a hysteroscopy. So a hysteroscopy is an examination of the womb cavity with a camera or a long thin telescope so that will be inserted into the womb. Um, and the, the hysteroscopy can be done, um, uh, in most cases it is done 
uh, in outpatients. Um, and it, in most cases, doesn't even require any kind of anesthetic. Sometimes the patient is asked to have taken some uh, uh, brufen or paracetamol, something uh, a simple analgesia uh, a few hours before the, the, the appointment. Uh, and, and that is, in most cases, all that is required. So they put a very thin telescope into the room and uh, are able to examine. So the whole procedure may take usually le less than 10, 15 minutes. And uh, um, during that examination, uh, they may see um, perhaps a polyp inside the cavity um, and, and that is the polyp that is then of course causing the thickening or that was noticed on the ultrasound scan. Now most polyps are non-cancerous but occasionally some polyps will be cancerous so hence these polyps have to be removed uh, and looked at under the microscope. So you can imagine if, uh, if a pipel that uh, thin straw is put in, it could miss something that is growing on the polyp. Um, so that is why it is important to uh, look inside with a telescope. Now, to, uh, the hysteroscopy, as I said, uh, the vast majority are done in clinic and something called outpatient hysteroscopy. But there are some women who will not tolerate them or uh, if, for instance, they have a very thickened womb lining, um, then the clinician may decide to do it under general anesthetic as a day case operation uh, where you're admitted and under a general anesthetic, a telescope is then inserted into the womb um, uh, and pictures taken. And if there is a polyp, the polyp is either plucked away or if there isn't a polyp, then a general scrape is done, what we call a curatage. And of course, all this yields a specimen uh, which will then be sent to the pathologist uh, to be looked at under the microscope. So all this will then allow us to uh, determine whether there is a cancer um, within the room cavity. That is all I want to say in this video. Thank you very much for um, watching it. Um, my next video that I'm going to be uploading is on the subject of what is endometrial hyperplasia. So that is what I'm going to be explaining in my next video. So please try and join me. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, then please consider subscribing or clicking the like button. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.